Thank you very much for joining uh, this conference. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am a hardware architect now, but I spent uh, 20 years as a software engineer also, and uh, my job is connecting the hardware and the software, yes. Uh, right now, I am an uh, architect in the Programmable Solution Group, uh, formerly Altera, and uh, I want to present some solution and uh, some problems uh, for uh, solution for the problems. What we can see in the data center for when we process uh, big data. Let um, start from the short introduction. Uh, the Intel is a data center company, and we want to be able to work with our partners uh, to accelerate uh, computing and connecting uh, the servers in the data centers together, yes. We are creating the hyper-connected world. And after uh, joining, uh, acquiring Altera, the Intel started the process of the integration of the FPGA with the processor uh, in the very short manner. And we also, as Intel, uh, we do not want to provide to the customers uh, the final solution, yes? It is that customer job. As Intel, we want to simplify the FPGA development, and we want to provide easy, we are working with our partners like uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, with easy deployment of the FPGA in the data center. What are the key challenges when we are uh, have the when we are processing data inside of the data center? Yes. What we all expect? We have the multiple data. We have the multiple server. We have the multiple application, and we expect uh, to increase. Uh, we are expect uh, to process these workloads using the same hardware and using uh, the same application, the same orchestration, uh, and in the environment, uh, what we know. Unfortunately, uh, the, current, uh, the current hardware, even the Intel processor Xeon, which are the very powerful and the much, much, much powerful they stay and will be, are not able to process some, uh, uh, some workloads uh, in, the, uh, in the way that is expected by our customers, yes. Uh, the still, uh, we have uh, problems with, the, for example, the uh, deep learning, with the machine learning, uh, with uh, processing of the big financial data, yes. Uh, this problem are going from uh, that uh, uh, we have the big data which do not fit uh, the single server, and we must connect uh, the uh, we must connect all the servers together to provide the better uh, connectivity and the better processing in the data center. That another problem is the power consumption. Uh, you can imagine that the big data center today uh, is uh, getting or the, it's need the power supply of the hundreds megawatts of the, uh, of the power. Uh, and you must uh, create for the data center the small electricity supply. And uh, one of the biggest challenges of our customers uh, is to decrease a power consumption and increase uh, the number of the jobs what we can do uh, using a single server, yes. And Another case is, uh, even when we have the hardware accelerators, yes, uh, Intel is a leader in the creating of the ASICs. Uh, but the problem with the ASIC today is uh, that the ASICs are, have, the have the single function. Uh, 
uh, we need the, our customers need to provide, make the computation using on the ASIC speeds or the similar speed, uh, but with the some programmability. Uh, with the ASIC, we can do a very, very large uh, processing. Uh, we can do very much. Uh, but not all. So uh, the goal for Intel is to provide uh, to the customers one server which could be used in the processing of the multiple use cases. I don't know uh, if you know what is the FPGA. Yes, uh, in this group I saw the many presentation of the software one. Yes, uh, the FPGA is a program. Let me introduce. Uh, tell. Uh, a few, few words about the, uh, what we can achieve and uh, what is the FPGA. FPGA is a programmable logic, yes. Uh, we when we have a problem, mm, computation problem, we can solve that problem in the multiple ways, yes. We could, for example, uh, write a program in the C and we can run that program and get some results of this computation, for example, after the seconds, minutes, days, yes. Uh, same way, we could have, uh, you could use also the FPGA, or the, we can use or create the ASIC, which uh, gets the same data and the input as the program gets, and provides the, uh, the same result uh, in uh, in the very fast way, yes. As I say, the problem with the ASIC is they are not the programmable, yes. When you create ASIC for the machine learning today, you can use it only for the machine learning, not... Uh, the FPGA is a solution uh, similar to the ASIC, which also solve uh, the computation problem, uh, but it is the something uh, between the software solution and the completely hardware solution. It is that programmable hardware. Uh, <coughs> sorry. The program, uh, for the FPGA, we are writing the program which uh, describes our problem. And when we need to change, uh, for example, the hardware, or to change that our computation logic, we just reprogramming uh, the FPGA to have some hardware which makes uh, solve another problem, but using the same hardware. You, uh, it is that bit advantage for the customers. What else uh, could we do? We could improve, as I say, uh, the, um, uh, we could uh, improve when we uh, state the program correctly. We can improve uh, the power consumption. Because uh, the FPGA and uh, also we can do much more processing uh, using that FPGA uh, comparing to the, for example, software. Uh, in many cases, yes, it depends how we define the, pr the uh, process and how we define the problem. The biggest problem in the today's application, when we have the cloud application, is uh, the, uh, the hardware, because uh, it's the hardware. When we have the processor, the processor and the CPU uh, has fixed architecture. You have the program, which is in memory, and you have the acceleration logic, uh, uh, and uh, you have a logic in the CPU, and you can read the, the, this data and process this data in the CPU, and you must put that data uh, back to the memory, yes? For example, to see this data using uh, another server or maybe the browser, the... And uh, the program, uh, even if it is well designed, will, uh, will be computed slowly when the hardware, what you use for the computation of that, will be slow, yes? Or we will have the big overhead uh, between uh, uh, and the moving the data, for example, between the memory and the CPU uh, and uh, vice versa. And the uh, um, Intel <coughs> currently acquired Altera because Intel wants to improve this, yes? Uh, Intel, as a vendor of the CPUs, uh, wants to provide the architecture 
when we can have the programmable logic very close to the CPU. It is why, because we want to have uh, make some workloads in the hardware and to decrease a path uh, between the CPU, which is uh, currently is providing you data, uh, to the output, uh, what, is, uh, what the users see uh, from, uh, from, this, uh, from this stage. Also, uh, but uh, I will talk a bit about what we have uh, problems with the moving the problems to the FPGA, yes? What problems we can solve in the FPGA? That, on um, this picture, you could see what the Intel today provides, yes? Uh, we have two groups of the uh, hardware products. One group is uh, just of the what we call the discrete FPGA, discrete uh, field programmable logic. This is a FPGA what uh, what is connected to the Xeon like uh, normal card, for example, through PCI interfaces. Yes. Uh, another uh, group of the uh, products what we provide and wh what we introducing is uh, the Xeon with integrated FPGA. What is the difference between these two groups? Yes, one most important picture uh, difference is that we want to keep the FPGA as close as possible to the CPU. We have uh, why we are do, uh, how we are doing that. Uh, and this um, on the top of the picture, we have the CPU, which is normally used. It is that normal CPU what we are using for the processing of the big data. But you have that uh, integrated hardware, which stays very close to the uh, very close means it stays under some die as a CPU, or the very closely to the CPU, and have access to the most important data buses uh, in the CPU uh, to increase your bandwidth of uh, bandwidth of your data and the latency of your data moving between CPU and the hardware accelerator. What we also provide? We also provide a concept of the HSSI. It is a concept what is called the high-speed serial interface. Uh, it is, looks very small on this one, uh, on this picture, but it is that one of the most powerful features uh, what we can do. Uh, for example, our partners uh, from Microsoft uh, are using this interface uh, to the providing uh, data directly to the FPGA from the network. Uh, using this HSSI link, we could implement, for example, Ethernet. So, uh, when you are processing the data, you are, uh, mm, uh, the data are uh, going to the, pro going to, uh, being processed, they are processed directly in the hardware accelerator. They are not going through the software, yes. For example, you can imagine in today's network stack, when you have the normal Ethernet card, normal NIC, uh, the time from the getting data from the network to the application is about 10 microseconds, yes? And the data chunks are about, let's say, the few kilobytes, yes? And usually that one kilobyte, yes? When you have megabytes of this data, uh, this data has a very long path to go from the network to the, uh, to the CPU and to be processed. Uh, the goal of this HSSI uh, interface is to connect something uh, like Ethernet and make processing very fast in the hardware accelerator to make it processing fast and going back to the, uh, to the um, client, uh, client who requested the data. We, as Intel, uh, we are providing, we want to provide and is the hardware development. Uh, today, uh, the, our partners from Microsoft are working on the providing in Azure uh, 
the environment uh, for the uh, processing, uh, making of the FPGA, uh, in the uh, making of the FPGA uh, by uh, uh, in the data center. And uh, we provide for them the tools to make possible to run these tools inside of the cloud, yes. Uh, the goal of Intel is to provide a solution to the customer and uh, the job of the uh, partners of our customers, yes, of the companies which are solving the real problem, like banking, is to define the problem and push uh, the problem into the uh, into that such system uh, last month uh, the intel uh, make the uh, to improve that process yes or even make it possible uh, intel uh, make uh, the first time in the history the uh, making the open sourcing the rtl code yes Normally, Intel is providing only the solution of the ASICs, yes, or maybe programmable logic to Altera, but Intel never made the uh, release the RTL code, what it could use to work together with the, on the Intel server, yes, to have access to the Intel peripherals on the Xeon level. Uh, this is called OPAE. This is the Open Platform Acceleration Environment. You could uh, get this and uh, you can use this uh, from the GitHub, yes. We, uh, as the using, uh, making the, um, running the application using the FPGA is today a very complex process, yes. We are working uh, with our partners to make simplifying the process. Uh, what is the problem? The FPGA is a hardware working on uh, very um, uh, FP, uh, FPGA is a hardware working on very closely to the CPU. Uh, very closely means uh, uh, it is working on the buses which are very sensitive to any errors. Yes, because this is a hardware. This is the completely different world than the software. It is <coughs> uh, part of this uh, framework is to create the environment when we defined API or it is that something that hardware API uh, for the hardware, which is uh, when we provide uh, some environment when the people can safely uh, run the hardware or they design inside of the PGA and uh, trying how it works, yes. And we have two ways. One way, and that it is the preferred way, we are creating some code, uh, whatever language we chose that. It is that, for example, the OpenCL, what probably the some of uh, you know. It could be the C, it could be the uh, some uh, language, some um, hardware language like Verilog of the VHDL. And using our tool, like a Quartus, uh, we could <coughs> compile this code uh, and run this in the simulation. We can uh, have, uh, we have the environment, which is called the AC, and uh, we can run this application and we can simulate the hardware environment into the hardware environment uh, on the server. And we can run the software which is working that on top of the FPGA and we can make a simulation environment to make it possible uh, to run this uh, using, uh, uh, using that end software. The next step will be running the, or the downloading code to the real FPGA and trying how the FPGA solves your problem. And the same process we can do with the OpenCL and uh, programming the OpenCL and define the problem in the OpenCL and first the simulate and next to run that problem on the real hardware, yes. What we are doing, uh, what we are providing? We want to, uh, as Intel, we want to provide uh, some examples uh, 
for the acceleration, yes, to present the customer how to use our environment and how to use uh, the, uh, our, and how we can use this uh, to um, accelerate some jobs, uh, accelerate some jobs. Uh, one of the very important topics what we see as Intel is a machine learning. And uh, we as, uh, and we assuming uh, in that programming model, uh, this is that one of the programming model and the example of the usage, how we can use that FPGA uh, with the real application, yes, without the big development, without uh, big uh, uh, investment into this, uh, just to see some improvements. We have the user application, we have the machine learning application like the Cafe, like Teano, like TensorFlow. And uh, they are, this application are using uh, the, uh, MK, the Intel framework like MKL DNN. And we as Intel uh, are providing the APIs to the, uh, um, uh, compatible with the MKL DNN which implements uh, some function like matrix mat multiplication in hardware. And uh, from the end user point of view, the user is still using the Cafe or Tern or the TensorFlow and really do not see, uh, the, uh, do not see uh, the FPGA at all, yes? This is the usage model only, yes? This is one of the possible uh, possibilities uh, to use that uh, FPGA and uh, hardware accelerators to, uh, to accelerate your, your big data jobs, yes? When you have own application, uh, maybe not the cafe, but using that, for example, MKL DNN, uh, you can also that try to run the FPGA, yes? You can also go on the lower layer, yes, like the, uh, to the plugin API and, for example, describe here uh, your, func your uh, function, which is not the specified as the MKL DNN, and uh, make, uh, and, uh, for example, making the some CNN uh, specific network, uh, network uh, neural network some specific layer. Uh, all these uh, sources are currently in the open source, yes? Uh, together with the infrastructure files, with the drivers uh, for Linux, and uh, we can get this from the open source and you can try uh, your journey with the FPGA and the hardware accelerators. What uh, we are working uh, in Intel, yes, our workloads, uh, uh, we are, we see, uh, when we can see uh, the, uh, the improvement, uh, for example, uh, in the, um, appli what application we see as uh, uh, promising uh, for the um, uh, hardware accelerators, yes. Uh, the first of all, uh, the machine learning, and, uh, uh, and CNN and uh, some event, uh, image identification, yes. Uh, that machine learning, uh, you can imagine uh, that uh, how your application with the FPGA should look like, yes. Uh, normally, uh, the problem of the machine learning or the image recognition is defined that way, yes. You have some small picture and input, and next you have uh, tons of data, yes, it is your model. And next, at the end, you get some small numbers. OK, this is a cut. It is machine learning, yes. And this problem, image recognition, is very, very complex uh, because of the model size. Uh, today, uh, the machine learning uh, using the standard servers is so expensive, and uh, especially the training, uh, because uh, the uh, the inter, uh, the CP, uh, on the CPU, you could make uh, on the CPU. Uh, you must uh, push a lots of data uh, in every layer. 
of the convolution layer, yes? When you have, for example, the 27 convolution layers, yes? And you have the, for example, models, which size is the 50 megabytes, this data will never fit in your pr CPU cache, yes? And probably will be uh, trial, uh, that from our observation, what, when we evaluate the problem of the machine learning, we see that the uh, normal processing means the data is going uh, mm, from the memory to the CPU and back, memory, CPU, and back, making get lots of data, making some processing in the CPU, and push this data back to the, uh, to the uh, memory, yes. Uh, the memory is a physical device. Uh, when we can see to the, memory, uh, to the CPU with the memory as a hardware device, which the memory has some speeds, yes, uh, and that means that this moving the data, uh, and when you repeat especially this process by the billion times during the processing, uh, this billion times uh, multiply even by this nanoseconds, yes, what the vendors of the memory presenting you, it means that uh, it will take the seconds, minutes, hours to process the data. When you have thousands of the millions picture to process, this time of the accessing to the memory multiplies by the millions. Uh, so, uh, why we can solve that problem, for example, with the FPGA, yes? We can define that problem, uh, for example, we are working, uh, we are working with the university, uh, technical university in Zurich. And uh, mm, we provide them hardware, yes. And uh, we have made, uh, and we uh, help them uh, to make the design of the training of the machine learning. But uh, their approach was completely different, yes. They see, for example, how to do, how to solve the problem of the machine learning training using the FPGA, yes? When you have small amount of data and input, a small amount of data and output, yes? They go and they say, okay, let's put a model in the FPGA. All the model, yes? For example, there is uh, some people today are working on the squeezing the model very much, yes? For example, you can know the architecture which is called the SqueezeNet, yes? And this model is that 500 times smaller than the models in the CPU, yes, when you are using, using the GPU. When this model is the five times smaller, then you can fit this model completely in the FPGA. When the model is in the FPGA, so all the data, what you are pushing through the hardware, is the small picture which is going through data center, is going through the CPU, the small picture is going to the FPGA, you're making all the processing inside of the FPGA, and you get the output. Okay, this is a cut from the FPGA. This process takes the milliseconds. Especially the problem, uh, they work completely on the training uh, model, yes. You can see here that uh, they were used the MNIST data set, yes. And they train digit seven, yes. You probably know, do you know what is that uh, problem, NIST problem? You have a pictures of the, mm, small pictures of the numbers, yes. It's, I remember, the 50,000 pictures, yes. And you must read these pictures and you must train your network, yes. Uh, training your network means you are repeat the process of the pushing of data of these pictures to the network that millions of times, yes, to get a better results, yes. This time uh, is uh, very uh, time consuming, yes. Uh, what they achieve using the FPGA, they limited the time of the training, uh, they uh, uh, decreased the time of the timing by 10 times. What is also that another uh, that uh, the uh, the problem of the uh, the problem of the training is not a very important problem yes for the machine learning uh, today because the training uh, the training models do not change very often yes uh, for example in the Microsoft in Amazon uh, they say we change a model for example once to maybe 
two years, maybe three years, yes? It's not changing very well. So it is good, for example, to run the training on the GPU to train the network because the GPU is going hit very well. But the problem is when we are deploying uh, the machine learning, yes? Uh, this, the same model is used on the hundreds of the thousands of the machines with the model, which must read through that CPU. And the cost of this deployment of the some machine learning uh, uh, solution, uh, when you want to use uh, when you want to use the GPU, is the very very high. Uh, so because the uh, GPU cards are expensive, yes. And we want to go uh, with the, our hardware accelerators to the uh, mass. Uh, to the mass. Uh, that our goal is to have a FPGA in the every CPU. Yes, maybe in not in all SQO, uh, maybe in not in all unit, but we want to have it very close. Uh, we want to very close with the server provided to have a possibility to have a possibility to program a PGA. Yes. Another good example of the using that uh, FPGA is the security and the encryption. Uh, that uh, what uh, that means the security is yes. uh, today mm, for example in the network in the uh, mm, uh, you know uh, for example that most of the traffic in the internet is using the secure HTTP secure HTTP is a very complex uh, cryptographic function which is that very high, which uh, provides a very high computation uh, which needs very high computation power from the CPU to process it uh, and uh, when the, the problem starts uh, when you're starting to encrypt tons of data yes your data center receives the terabytes of data Maybe it is not your problem as the application user. This is more the problem of the data center providers. And uh, <coughs> the providers say, OK, our server is able to processing, let's say, the 20 or the 25 gigabits of the data per second, yes? But when we are without the um, uh, encryption, yes? When you are adding encryption, yes, the uh, mm, time of the number of the CPU cycles uh, necessary for the processing of the traffic increase, for example, by two, sometimes by three, depending on the how strong encryption you have, yes? The data should be encrypted, yes? But when you're starting to encrypt the data using the software, you, uh, you're wasting your time for the making this process using the software, yes? The software, uh, the, the CPU, what we are using, could make the mod more... Uh, <coughs> Another jobs like the machine learning of the training, yes, of the image recognition, identification, instead of making, for example, the security function, yes. So people say, let's move this um, this task to the FPGAs, yes. Connect the FPGA closely to the um, Xeon and try to move this task in the FPGA. Another application is, uh, maybe for many of them, uh, is uh, that uh, exotic. Uh, it is called uh, virtual switching, yes. Last year, Microsoft, uh, our partner, uh, just presented a concept of the SmartNIC. How the SmartNIC can work in the uh, virtual network infrastructure. Uh, what means the uh, virtual environment? The virtual environment means multi-tenancy. Uh, so that uh, in the data center, using a single server, you can process, uh, you can have the multiple workloads from the different, uh, uh, from different customers, yes? For example, customer A is using the this course, customer B is using this course, yes? The server is reused, yes? And we want to have connectivity between them. What means uh, connectivity? Uh, connectivity means the network isolation. Connectivity, uh, so uh, with uh, the customer A uh, do not want 
to know what the customer B is doing or if he wants to know uh, what the customer B is doing, but the provider uh, couldn't provide that information. He must protect the network, yes? And uh, very last years, uh, the virtual switching uh, is a big environment uh, what, uh, 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 which has a big uh, interest from the data center providers, yes, like Microsoft. And uh, to make this, uh, that uh, features, yes, like isolation, like virtualization of the jobs, uh, very created uh, Veros created the tons of new protocols uh, that was not known, uh, for example, the three or four years ago, yes, when the really the data center uh, started, yes, pro uh, processing the data. And it creates a tons of the new problems, yes. Uh, we have, uh, currently, we have no ASICs to process that data correctly. Uh, we have, and when uh, when the process is using that, the, when the software is trying to run, uh, process that data, uh, it spends a lot of cycles. Yes? It is even not the encryption. It is just the dividing the traffic between customer A and the customer B. That, and uh, how the Microsoft uh, solving that problem? Yes. It is, uh, we were working uh, with the Microsoft Azure uh, to create <coughs> projects called the Catapult. It is that quite old, you can see that this is 2014, uh, because that uh, customer is still extending this, extending this, and presenting the value of this solution, yes. Uh, they created a card uh, with the FPGA which is connected very closely to the CPU, to the Xeon, and they want to have, uh, they want to make two things, yes? One is to provide a complex network connectivity uh, through this card, uh, uh, so it is works like a NIC card, and also it can work as a accelerator connected directly with other accelerators yes, over the FPGA. So what we have, uh, what we, what we're getting, uh, to our, why they are doing this, yes? Uh, they have the algorithms, for example, using the Bing, where uh, they created the algorithms, they can search the data uh, very parallelly, yes. Uh, they can divide the searching job to the multiple servers, yes. But uh, the searching requests through the Bing are not going to the software. Uh, to the, um, they are going to the FPGAs, yes. And FPGAs having uh, access to the memory uh, can make the searching instead of the uh, instead of the CPU. Uh, what we can, what is improved here? Yes, uh, I can say as a hardware engineer, oh, bandwidth is improved, latency is improved, but what that means for the normal user? Yes, of the Bing, Microsoft Bing. What we have? You can see here what's uh, how the Microsoft uh, uh, what the Microsoft achieve. The latency is not only the hardware problem. The latency is also the problem of the application, yes? When you have the client and you have the server, you are most interested. For example, you get the request to your database and you expect this uh, re uh, response for this request from the database as, uh, as quick as possible, yes? This is the latency in this case, yes. When you have a Bing and you are looking for the data in the Bing database, yes, you are expecting to get that data uh, faster and faster and faster, yes. And using that FPGA solution, all this is combined, not only the uh, FPGA, uh, uh, it is the software plus FPGA, you are getting the 29% of the latency reduction in getting data fr uh, from, the, uh, from, date, uh, uh, from the Bing, yes. So your, uh, you get the responses for your queries uh, in the Bing 29% faster than here. You also 
are interested in the cloud to get your data uh, faster, yes? When you find this data, want to copy this data on the server, for example, which is processing the given data, yes? For example, pictures, yes? Your big data, you have the billions of bytes uh, and which you want to move between the uh, between the servers, yes, to make a processing, yes, like a Hadoop. It is that Hadoop problem processing. And using this approach, the Microsoft uh, decrease, uh, the, uh, increase the throughput of the data by two times, yes. That means, for example, that copying data is yes, from one server to another one was uh, you get the, your data two times faster thanks to the FPGA and moving some jobs to the FPGA. And of course, you, by at, you are not using uh, very extensive way the CPU. You have the 30% of the uh, <coughs> less power and the cost of your overall solution is decreased. And uh, it is uh, that what we can achieve using that PGA and that PGA is used correctly, yes? So, uh, because today it is, uh, uh, when we are want to use the hardware accelerators, we must change our way how we think about the problem, yes? Uh, here I saw that very good presentations, yes, when the people say, okay, uh, that we can make the big data processing in the good, uh, we can make good uh, uh, data processing faster when we can make the parallel the job, yes. It is that very good direction, yes. We must work together uh, to create such algorithms uh, and to trying to deploy this algorithm in the data center, yes, with the massive parallelization when we can, uh, save the environment, we can save uh, the power, we can save our money uh, to make that processing our data faster, cheaper, and uh, quicker. Thank you very much. If you have some questions, so. So are there any questions? Uh, hi, I have the question. Yes. Uh, because it reduces the uh, the power and it allows, uh, yeah, there are lots of benefits. Do you think it will be in the future possible to have also FPGA in the mobile device because the uh, the power consumption is very important for that device? Uh, today we uh, we are working more. And uh, um, uh, we are working well on the uh, second part of the mobile devices, yes. And the, for example, with the base station, yes, with the 5G, yes. Uh, you probably know that Intel is uh, in, um, is trying to move uh, to the uh, 5G, and uh, that also that as every new. Uh, a technology, uh, the 5G is very complex and there is no possibility to process it correctly in the software only. And uh, Intel is trying to improve that 5G uh, by the way of the, uh, uh, by the way of the, uh, using that inside of the base station and uh, some core network, yes. Uh, when we are talking about the mobiles, uh, the mobile is the quite cheap device, yes. And uh, there is uh, many vendors, yes, uh, who are making the, uh, and the mobile phones are sell in the very, very high volume, yes. The Intel would be interested in that volume uh, and even try uh, to, to make that mobile phones, yes. Uh, that uh, uh, today uh, we see that it is that uh, something uh, what we can stay uh, for our partners, yes. The FPGA technology is uh, uh, today is that quite expensive, yes, uh, comparing to the A6, yes. And uh, when we, <coughs> uh, uh, it's for us, for our business, yes, when we can have the FPGA in that, uh, in the, in the mobile phone, it is great, yes, thought it is great business for Intel, yes. But uh, we understand also, but the cost of that, the, 
deployment, yes, for the vendor of the will be also high. So we are focusing today on the uh, on the second side, yes, on the part when you are when the mobile phone is talking about.